Hey, so um, I'm working on uh, representing and intervening by uh, Ian Hacking, and it has a whole lot in it, and I was gonna try and like, wait till I got to the end and make an epic video about it all, but it's too cool, there's too many things to cram into one video. So, video number one about Ian Hacking, we're gonna talk about Bohr, Niels Bohr, quantum Niels Bohr's response to Thomas Kuhn, um, even though Thomas Kuhn was like way after Bohr, but, um, and, and we're also gonna talk about uh, something called scientific realism versus anti-realism. Okay, let's do it. So uh, first realism and anti-realism and then Kuhn's response and then where I'm at. And these actually do relate to the quantum absolute truth videos that I made earlier. Uh, and they'll take a side, which you'll see, which you'll see by the end. So the question of realism is pretty simple. Um, it's, I mean, simple to understand and not simple to solve. Uh, is are the scientific theories and entities that we propose in science, do they exist really? Um, an example of that would, that would be stupidly easy is like, uh, does oxygen exist? Like, probably oxygen exists. Like, we know enough about chemistry that, that oxygen exists. And so that would be, we would be realists about the ex existence of oxygen because we believe that it's a thing. Um, and it almost sounds ridiculous to, to even talk about um, if we, sorry, it almost sounds ridiculous to even talk about this if we're, uh, if we use an example like oxygen, but, an, but, a, but a different example would be something like, like a quark, um, like the things that make up protons and the things that make up other, other um, particles, like mes maybe, maybe mesons, I can't remember at the, at the moment. Um, and uh, the example that I, uh, that like makes me feel like I should be a realist is DNA. Like, of course, DNA is real. Everybody's got DNA. But an example that makes me feel like I shouldn't be a realist is like the wave function in quantum mechanics. There, there's, there's things that we don't know whether they're real or not. They seem to be fundamental to our scientific theories. And the main question that's being held up in the debate about realism and anti-realism is: is uh, are our scientific models? Uh, are they just intellectual tools that help us predict, or do they correspond with reality? And that word correspond is like laden with historical baggage, but I want to look at an example that um, makes me feel like not a realist, like this is an anti-realist example. So I'm gonna quote um, Hacking here from page 22, if you're interested. Okay, um, so uh, example of biological models, amino acids, blah, blah, blah. The model may help us arrange the phenomenon in our minds. It may suggest new microtechnology. But it is not a literal picture of how things really are. I'll stop the quote. Of what he means, like those those models you see in chemistry class, like nucleus, ball, ball, like amino acid models that look like like ball and stick models. Those aren't literally what the things look like, but it's a way to help us understand it. So that particular model, it's not a true correspondence to what's real, but we still use it. So. Um, Cool. It is not a quote. It is not a literal picture of how things really are. Here's where it gets interesting. I could make a model of the economy out of pulleys and levers and ball bearings and weights. Every decrease in the weight, M, the money supply, produces a decrease in the angle I, the rate of inflation, and an increase in the number N of the ball bearings in the pan, the number of unemployed workers. We get the right inputs and outputs, but no one suggests that this is what the economy is. And that's exactly why like, we have to be skeptical about, or it, it, it's interesting to be skeptical about realism versus anti-realism. Because if we made this toy model of like balls and strings, imagine like you pull on a pulley and this pulls up and it tilts more ball bearings into the pan and the ball bearings, like it's a toy. It's, a, it's an existent toy that's physical and in the world. And we would never confuse that toy with the economy itself. We, one, know for a fact that the economy is more complicated than the toy, and two, we know that this is the toy, not the literal economy. So why then are we so married to our intellectual tools if they're just, if how are they different than just toys in our minds? Um, they, we know for a fact that an idea inside my head is not literally equal to the same to like the economy. Like my idea is not equal to the economy. It's a representation title, representation, representing. It's a representation of the economy and it's not actually literally the economy itself. Um, and then, and then 
but we but we're but we're wedded to those ideas uh, because we have a, a deep seated belief that the closer we get to understanding, the more our models correspond. There's that word again. Correspond to the reality of the world in itself. I don't know exactly what molecules really truly look like, but I know that I've got mostly H2O in a, in a water glass, for example. Okay, um, so realism versus anti-realism. Example is a toy model of the economy. No one would ever confuse a toy model of the economy with the actual economy itself, but when we're talking about ideas, we do confuse the ideas that we have in our heads with the actual reality itself. And so that is a, is a way to look, just like a broad brushstrokes way, to look at realism versus anti-realism. And I'm gonna give you one more example before we go because just for fun, um, Freud. Like, Freud now, we don't, he's got some problems. But imagine instead of like e ego, super ego, this is 25 if you're looking um, for it, uh, in transference, we think about um, social laws. Like, uh, maybe there are social laws that govern behavior that are just as real as gravitational laws, but somehow we have this intuition that those socially derived laws aren't as real as the physically derived laws. Laws. An anti-realist can say, we don't care about that intuition. None of it's actually that real. Um, there's more details in here that I, I can, that I'll just skip for now. And since this is getting kind of long, I'm going to put the Kuhn stuff in another video. Uh, realism or anti-realism, that's the question that um, Hacking's going to try and answer. I know from what he said that he's a realist, and he's going to try and defend that. And we will see what happens.